What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. The YouTube broadcasted Google Honeycomb event just wrapped up where they showed us a ton of new honeycomb-ish features and uh, what we can expect from Google's first tablet OS. So let me go ahead and run you through what they told us. So if you see me look down, it's because I got some notes in front of me. The keynote conference demonstration thing just ended. Let's go ahead and jump right in with the Honeycomb UI was how they led into the event, showing a lot of the new features uh, of the Honeycomb layout. It really looks very different than any Android operating system we've seen before, including the most recent version, Gingerbread. So first, as you'll see, there's a completely new layout. Uh, there's a brand new multitasking button, which is going to open up all of your apps. Certainly, it's going to be for well, multitasking. Uh, there's a new Google search button you can see up there in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, the bottom is now for notifications, which actually pop up with images. Uh, so if someone's trying to voice call you, if you're getting an email and you have a picture of them stored, they'll actually show up right there in a very non-intrusive way. It uh, really augments the tablet experience and really separates the tablet experience from what we've seen previously. Uh, on phones. You also have a new quick settings panel where you can jump in and adjust all of the basic settings that you use the most, you know, volume, brightness, uh, and those kind of things. Uh, the rest of the screen real estate is just going to be used for apps and widgets, and there are going to be quite a few of the apps and widgets. Uh, first, all old Android applications will work. So for those of you that were worried about fragmentation, not to worry. They may not be optimized for Honeycomb, but they will still work. Uh, so if you love your older version of Angry Birds, don't fret, you'll still be able to kill some pigs. Uh, also, there's going to be something now called, funnily enough, uh, app fragmentation, uh, which is kind of interesting. It sounds like fragmentation, like different platforms are supporting. Uh, but actually what it means uh, is that inside of the application, you can have different panels and screens. They demonstrated this with Gmail. Uh, so you've probably seen some screenshots of what Gmail looks like on the Honeycomb, uh, but it definitely gives you different panels. So on one panel, you can have all of your email coming in. On the other panel, you can have the actual text of that email. And as you rotate it, you can move those panels around, and that's what they mean by fragmentation. Kind of interesting. You'll actually be able to drag applications around inside of applications. So inside the Gmail application, for example, you can tap on a message and actually drag it right to a folder, which is kind of a novel idea, and I think will really make a Honeycomb a immersive and separated um, experience. So immersive and unique. Uh, so the next thing they talked about was a new graphics rendering engine called RenderScript. Uh, which is going to be used for a lot of the 3D stuff that you're going to see in Honeycomb. Demonstrated on a few native applications, including the YouTube uh, player, which is now new and redesigned and sort of has a 3D uh, theater effect to it, which is kind of neat. So we'll definitely see a lot of 3D capabilities as tablets with dual cores come out. Uh, there needs to be support for accessing both of those cores. All right, so moving right along, uh, there's also a new music app, by the way, to take advantage of that render scripts. Kind of neat, it's got sort of a cover flow-esque uh, look and feel to it, but it appears to be very nice. Uh, they also announced Google Body, which is sort of like Google Maps for people. Uh, so you can go and peel back skin and look at the muscular system, circular system, circulatory system, endocrine system, uh, whatever systems you want to see. If you want to see muscles, you want to see bones, you can actually go ahead and do that. You can pan and zoom actually all the way around a person, uh, which is kind of neat, perhaps a little bit pervy, um, but kind of uh, kind of cool to see. So look for Google Body uh, coming very soon. Uh, there's also going to be a new camera app, which is kind of nice. You're gonna have full control over the camera functionality of your Honeycomb tablet, so white balance and all those effects. Uh, easy switching for front-facing camera. And of course, there's going to be full video chat uh, capability, which is going to have image stabilization built in, which is kind of neat. Uh, they did a, they kept waiting for him to show up. Uh, they kept doing, uh, or they kept trying to get video chat with uh, CeeLo Green, so he showed up there uh, eventually. Uh, CNN came on stage to demonstrate a new CNN application, which is kind of neat. You get support for iReport, so if you're witnessing news happening, uh, you can record it with your tablet, upload it to iReport, and you can actually be part of the news. Uh, they didn't give a release date, but for the most part, it's what you'd expect from an immersive news app. There'll be video pictures and a ton of articles to choose from. Uh, nothing giant. Uh, they will say it will be available with the Motorola Zoom tablet, which is presumably going to be the first 
uh, honeycomb tablet to hit the market. Uh, the next big news, speaking of market, that was a very nice segue, is in the Android market. We now have an Android web app store, which actually works really cool. Uh, you can go right to, I believe it's market.android.com, although I need to uh, specify that to be sure. Uh, you can go ahead and download applications now right from a web browser directly to your device. You can browse by category featured. Uh, developers can actually embed YouTube videos uh, in their web page. Uh, so you can sort of see the applications a little bit more. And as you go ahead and hit buy, it'll automatically send it right to your device. Now, Android fragmentation and the real fragmentation, so support for multiple operating systems, has really been a concern, especially amongst developers. Uh, this helps take care of that a little bit. When you click on an application to buy, if you have multiple devices registered to your Gmail account, uh, it's going to show you which applications are compatible with that application. So if you're running a really older version of Android, so you got a G1, and you also just picked up Zoom, not all applications are going to work on other platforms. So as you just click an application, it'll tell you, you know, right in the list if you want to send it to your G1 or send it to your Zoom, and you can go ahead and pick the one or both that are available and send it right to there, and it'll start downloading automatically, uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, there's also going to be support for in-app purchases, so more ways to give folks your money. Uh, you know, you can buy virtual goods, you can get premium versions of games, all that stuff we've seen from in-app purchases uh, in the past on Apple's App Store. Uh, there's also going to be multiple currency support for developers, so if you're a developer in London and you're pricing your stuff in pounds, you'll now be able to price it in dollars, uh, and vice versa. If you want it to be sold in different markets, uh, there'll be different currency support. So that'll be sort of rolling out in phases, so if you're a developer, it's probably really good news to, uh, for you. Uh, it's also going to be support for multiple, multiple, multiple applications. So certainly, uh, Android in the past could run uh, multitasking, uh, this is now, and sort of taking that a little step further, uh, going to be genuine, true multitasking, taking advantage of both dual cores, uh, which is going to be really impressive. Um, I had a chance to see the Motorola Zoom in person. Uh, it was the first tablet that's used the new dual core platform. Uh, I believe it was rocking some Tegra 2 action. Uh, and this thing is very, very uh, capable of putting out an immersive environment. Uh, the applications look gorgeous. Games look fantastic. Uh, if you were looking for... Not even necessarily an iPad competitor anymore, but if you were watching people play iPad games and looking longingly at your Galaxy Tab to sort of have that same experience, uh, you're definitely going to have that and perhaps a little bit more now uh, with Android and really has come up to par very nicely and is trying to separate themselves uh, from the rest of the market. I don't think that we now have tablets as iPad competitors. Uh, I think that they are now completely uh, going to be on par with each other and it's going to come down to a matter of personal choice. There are a lot of fantastic tablet choices coming in the very near future and it's a great time to be in the market. So what do you guys think of Honeycomb? That was a lot of rambling for a short explanation. I want to know what you guys think. Are you excited? Not excited? Are you waiting to get a Honeycomb tablet? Do you not care? Are you waiting for an iPad 2? Leave all your comments down below. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check out the site for all your tech news, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.